What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about this Lowrance Hook 2 and this is the 4X version that does not have the GPS. They do make a GPS version of this because we're going to be doing a deep dive, show you what you get in the package, to show you how to install this thing on the trolling motor. That's how I'm going to do it. Also talk about how you can put this on your transom as well. And guys, we're going to be talking about some different applications as far as what you can use this for, as well as show you some of the features of how this thing actually operates. And then we're going to take it out on the water and do some testing. And guys, if you like this kind of stuff, stick around, subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell, and let's get going with this review. All right, guys, let's open up this box and see what comes inside. And on the packaging here, it has some nice little pictures of kind of what to expect out of this unit. Okay, the colors are really nice on this thing, and I'm going to show you in demo mode some of the features, and then once we actually get out on the water, I'll show you what the sonar actually looks like. But it's a really nice color display. I really like it. And the reason I got this GPS is mainly to use for water temperature, the water depth, and reading the structure on the bottom. It says it can find fish, but I'm not really there to, you know, pick up on the fish per se. And I'm going to show you some of the different options it has you can actually put it to find fish and it'll show a little fish display but is i don't know if that's accurate or not but mainly for judging the bottom structure is what i got it for and i think it's going to do a really good job at that and it does do the water depth the water temperature and then you can see how it has a really nice display of colors here for actually judging the bottom well let's break this box open and see what we get so guys, this does come with a bullet transducer and they make different types of transducers in the Lowrance line and they name them all after some type of bullet weight. So this is the bullet. They also make a double shot, a triple shot, and that just refers to the different options that come with the transducer and its different sonar capabilities. So this is their basic version that comes with this and for 89 bucks, you know, that's to be expected. But this is going to do everything that I need it to do as far as reading the bottom, temperature, and water depth. So we'll be hooking this up later, and there's your little power connections. And I'm going to show you how I rigged this up on my John boat. Like I said, I'm going to do a trolling motor mount, but I also have a little circuit breaker I'm actually going to wire this into, and my battery extension cables. So if you like that kind of stuff, please stick around, and I have other videos as well on my battery setup. We also get the mount. So this is a different mount than they've had in the past. I guess uh, before they actually had a mount that was able to swivel around. This one only goes up and down, but it is a pretty cool little mount here. And they do provide hardware to actually secure this down. I'm gonna show you an install in another video on how I'm gonna do this. But the way this works is to unlock it, you push that down and you're able to squeeze in these fins and actually put the unit in. And then once you get it to where you want it, you just lock it back into place and it keeps those fins from coming back out. So a pretty cool little mount. It seems very sturdy and I think I'm gonna like this mount. So they did provide an inline fuse. That is pretty cool. That's gonna protect your investment. So a nice little addition there. Okay, and this is the hardware they give you. Okay, if you're gonna be doing a transom mount, this right here is gonna mount to your transom in whichever configuration, that's gonna allow that bullet transducer to actually be secured in place whichever way you want it. But for mounting it on the trolling motor, all you need is a dryer hose clamp. Okay, and I'm gonna show you that in a little bit on how I'm gonna set this up on my trolling motor. Okay, so the bread and butter of this all is the unit itself nice little unit here and it does have the four inch screen and i'm also going to show you when we do a test how well this screen actually is visible with the sun out so i know that's a big thing that a lot of people are wondering about is it still visible because a lot of times you know you're looking at your cell phone it's really hard to see it if you're out in the bright sun so we're going to see if it actually is visible during the sun so pretty nice little unit here. It is in a horizontal fashion, and that is one of the selling points for me. A lot of these budget fish finders, they call them, you know, either a depth finder or whatever we call them, okay? I'm not using it to find fish, so to speak, but they're gonna be mounted like this. And I don't really like that because I feel like this way, you're able to see more 
of the bottom area. And then this way, I guess the reason people like it is because you can see more top to bottom, but not so much horizontal. But I kind of think it's better this way. Especially if you're gonna be doing shallower water, I think this is gonna work out just fine. Uh, but this way, I think, I don't think you can see as much. So I do like the way they actually went with it this way. And you know, they changed it for a reason because it probably makes more sense to have it this way, okay? This unit is also used for ice fishing. So I'm gonna show you a different setting that is used for ice fishing. And so that's pretty cool too. So it's got dual purpose use. And if you're an ice fisher, this might be a good unit for you. I don't do ice fishing, so I can't tell you all the ins and outs of that, but it does say you can use it for ice fishing. So I'm gonna show you one setting that you can actually use for that, and it might help you out. So other than that, it comes with your standard instruction manuals. It comes with uh, the template, like I said, to actually put that into your dash if you want to mount it that way. And one little nice thing that they added in here, actually there's two of them, is these nice little Lorant stickers. That's pretty cool. That's a nice little feature that not a lot of companies actually throw in anymore. So if you're looking to rock some of this Lorant swag, so to speak, on your vehicle or wherever you put these, they also provide that, so that's pretty cool. All right, guys, so we've talked about what comes in the box. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install this and show you what I did, okay? I've already installed it, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it for my application on this John boat. And this thing is gonna be perfect for that person who wants to use this on a kayak because the unit is very small. It's not gonna be getting in the way when you're making casts, pulling those fish in from the side. It's gonna be out of the way. I will say there is some wiring that's exposed and stuff. When it comes to a visual, it's not gonna be the best, but I tell you, hopefully the versatility and actually the functionality of using this fish finder is gonna be uh, what outweighs some of those negatives. Uh, so let's take a look at my install right here and check out the video that I posted on the actual install of this Sun Dolphin boat. And maybe you can use the same setup because I show you how to mount it on the trolling motor and some of the options as far as mounting it on the transom if you go that route as well. Now we're gonna actually take a look at the unit itself, break down some of the options you have as far as how to set it up and show you what it's capable of doing and then we'll actually take it on the water and actually do a test and show you how it actually works when you're going to you know, look at the water depth, the temperature and actually the structure on the bottom there. Okay, we went ahead and turned on our unit here. This is the power button here. And I'm just gonna go through on what some of these buttons are. So this button right here, if I go ahead and press it, you'll see that these little lines that indicates that if it's a fish or not, actually turn to little symbols that look like fish. I'm not sure how accurate that actually is. I guess that's to, you know, make this thing sound like it's an actual fish finder. But these little emblems down through here that is supposed to signify a fish uh, and we'll turn it off again and you'll see that they go back to actually looking like that so just to give you a little insight of what this is if you see the yellow and the red colors the yellow indicates a hard surface the red indicates a softer surface and then the blue is even softer or it's not even picking it up at all okay so kind of give you some uh so this will kind of give you insight of what is on the bottom, if it's a hard bottom, soft bottom, or if it's a hard object, such as a log or something like that on the bottom. Okay, so this is in demo mode, and this is just going through a bunch of different uh, variations of depth, water temperature, things like that. We'll actually get it out on the water and show you exactly what it's reading on my little lake I have here, and show you what some of these different structures actually look like. Okay, it switched over to the flasher image. This is what you'll pretty much use if you are just out there ice fishing. Uh, if you're out just normal fishing on a lake or something, you're probably not gonna use this. And I'm not even really sure what a lot of this even represents. Uh, but if you go on Lawrence's website, they actually have, and I can link this in the description as well, they actually break down what a lot of this actually means. So it has your water depth here, and I'm just gonna break this down and what I actually know what it is. 
Uh, this symbolizes the actual depth. And then over here you can see as well what your depth is, water temperature. Uh, but this right here shows the activity in the water level. Okay, so it's picking up on different activity really close to the surface. And that could be, you know, sounds coming off the surface. Uh, this is showing some activity in about the eight to 10 foot range. And then you can see it's just moving around because it's definitely in that simulator mode or demo mode. So that's why it's like that. But you can go on their website and it'll break it down a little bit better. Uh, because like I said, I'm not into ice fishing. I don't really know what all this signifies, but you can definitely check that out. They break it down really well on their website. Okay, it switched back over to the normal uh, sonar function. And like I said, this doesn't have the GPS, so we don't have that chart option. If you want the chart option and the GPS, you'll pay about 30 bucks more for that. And uh, you know, if you're into fishing on bigger lakes and stuff and actually charting where you're actually going on the water, and that, that could be a really good option for you. Uh, but this is just the basic one. It only has the sonar function and the flasher image if you're gonna be ice fishing. Uh, going through some of the options here, this is your actual uh, select button, but you can pick it right here. We can go from auto, and these are your directional arrows. Okay, to actually bring up this little mode over here to where you can switch the different settings. So you're gonna click the mode button. That's gonna bring up either custom, you have a bunch of different settings here, but um, you have auto and ice fishing. So to get back to that other screen, we're gonna hit X and that's gonna bring us back to custom. You can select your different ranges by just going over and you can select a bunch of different depths here. But for this, I usually just leave it on auto. And then auto sensitivity, you can go over that, adjust that however you need to. I usually leave all of these settings in the auto. And then you have advanced, so you can do your ping speed. Uh, ping speed, I leave it on 100%. Uh, I can see if you were ice fishing, you might wanna actually lower that maybe. Uh, but you know, if you're out cruising around on a lake or whatever, I'm just gonna leave it 100%. That is gonna speed up the transmission from that sonar bouncing off of whatever structure is on the bottom. And it's gonna give you a more accurate reading. All right, we can also do the noise reduction. Uh, so I kind of just leave this on low as well. I guess if you wanted to uh, pick up on less noise on the surface, that might be an option there. You can switch your color line. So we can adjust this a little bit and see what that does. So you can see how it kind of changed the colors there a little bit, but I usually just leave this kind of where it was in auto setting. Okay, I think the colors that it comes with pretty much uh, when you get it out of the box on those auto settings is pretty good. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. So that's all of those different options there for the settings. Uh, so you can definitely mess with those, get it where you want it. Uh, let's go back to ice fishing mode here. So for ice fishing, you can also uh, change all of these as well. And if you want to go back to the default settings, you can actually select that as well. Fish ID, let's see what that is. So uh, fish ID is where you can actually turn those little uh, cone looking emblems into the fish with this little button here. Same, pretty much the same feature as that. Uh, so you can turn that on or off depending uh, also, you can adjust your ranges and uh, the sensitivity. Let's go to advanced. Same thing, change color line, noise, and also the ping speed. All right, so that is pretty much the basics when it comes to, uh, let's switch this back actually. So that's pretty much the basics when it comes to operating this LaRanche unit. And like I said, this is their pretty much their most basic model they have. And I just put it back on auto. I think that's gonna do the best for what we need it. And you can see the colors went back to displaying pretty much the out of the box options that you have. So let's actually get this out on the water and I'm gonna show you how it actually reads the bottom, the water temperature and all that once we actually launch this boat in the water.
Okay, and this is still actually in demo mode. We're gonna get it back over to the actual mode. All right, so if you push the power button again, you can actually go to a couple other settings and this calls it the system controls or you can turn the power off the brightness level. So you can increase the brightness. You got night mode, that's pretty cool. So it actually dimmed the light just a little bit more. Stop sonar, edit overlays and data overlays. I'm not gonna mess with that. We're just gonna keep it really simple on this. Okay, so right now you can tell I had the system set to simulator on. I'm actually gonna go over, turn this off because we wanna run the actual system. This is the very first reading we're getting and you can tell it's reading. We are super close to the to the bottom here because we have that transducer mounted on the actual trolling motor. So I would say the transducer is like, like it says, literally only a couple inches from the bottom. Okay, let's see if we can get in a little bit deeper water here. As you can tell, a little windy. But you can tell the structure did change just a little bit there. So this is where you could actually switch it to a different setting for the custom settings, or you'd be able to tell the clarity a little bit better in the shallow water. You can tell we're getting a little bit deeper now, so you can see the structure there. So you can see we have some hard bottom here, and sorry, the army is out here blowing a lot of stuff up right now, and we're pretty much right beside one of their firing ranges. So excuse that, but this is uh, one of the better lakes to come to if we're gonna do stuff like this, so sorry for that. Uh, but you can tell this is pretty much just a hard packed bottom right here, really no structure. So there was a fish that just came up to the surface here. Yeah, I don't know if it even picked it up, but you can tell we have a little bit of rocks here. That's pretty cool. So that might be something when you're out fishing, you can really target to see if you're actually fishing around structure and stuff that might actually be holding fish. Pretty cool there. Let's turn on this little fish mode. So it's saying it picked up some fish over here. All right, so it's saying there is a fish at the bottom here and a whole school of fish. What? I wonder how accurate that actually is. And we are actually on a log right now. So I'm gonna swivel the, the sonar around and see if it picks up anything else. So you can kind of tell right here that that is a log as well as that. And that's because we're literally on one. <laughs> Uh, but I think if you were fishing in probably, I would say eight, 10 feet of water, and that stuff was actually on the bottom, you'd be able to see it. This Hook 2 sonar system is supposed to be, like it says, twice the size of normal sonar cones. So that's what the transducer is transmitting down to the bottom with their sonar. And it's supposed to be double the amount of coverage. So that should be very, very useful in you know determining where objects are in the water there. But you can see we're in almost four foot of water. So you can see uh, pretty clear right there what's on the actual bottom. So right there, it looks like uh, <laughs> we might be heading across a school of fish right here. Man, if that is real, we are in the business, guys. We are in the business. No, I'm not sure how actually... Uh, accurate that is <laughs> that'd be a bunch of little bait fish all right so thanks for watching this video hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight on what this unit's actually capable of i know this wasn't a full in-depth review of this uh 
But like I said, you can go to Lawrence's website, find out a little bit more information about this product and some of their other products. This is just their entry level with the bullet transducer. They also have one called the split shot, the double shot and the triple shot that has a lot better transducer than this. They have the model that actually has the GPS where you can chart your coordinates and where you've actually been, where you've actually fished or set up trails to actually go out and try to target certain places on that GPS. So there's different lines out there that you can take advantage of. This is just, like I said, the very basic one. And I think it's gonna suit me pretty well. Uh, from the demo that I did, I wasn't that confident in a lot of the, set, the settings on it. Like I said, it didn't really pick up a lot of that structure until you were right on it. So I think we're gonna have to tweak it just a little bit and just get used to it in general, I think. Uh, so maybe I can do a review later on once I actually get comfortable with this and give you a better understanding of kind of how to set this up. Uh, but I think for a budget entry level, uh, keeping it blue collar type product, I think this is gonna suit you pretty well, especially if you're fishing uh, water anywhere from five to a little bit deeper than that. I think this is really gonna allow you to read that structure on the bottom. So guys, once again, thanks for checking out this video. Like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Thanks for watching.